Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to take a look at the new Sunlu Filodryer S1 filament drying and storage box. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the Sunlu Filodryer S1. This is a filament dry box and it's intended to help keep moisture out of your filament. Do you ever notice that when you get a new spool of filament, there's usually a pretty substantial desiccant pack included in the bag? Ever wonder why it's there? Well, it's there because 3D printing filaments are hygroscopic, and that's a fancy word that means the filament likes to absorb moisture from the air. And some types of filament are better at it than others. Nylon is notoriously one of the most hygroscopic filaments you can buy, but the point is, 3D printing filament begins absorbing moisture from the air as soon as you take it out of the bag. So you might be wondering, what difference does it make if the filament absorbs moisture? Well, I've looked around the web, and my research indicates Moisture in filament can cause issues such as filament degradation as the water molecules break down the bonds between the long polymer chains that comprise the filament, extruder or hot end jams or clogs, and low quality 3D prints showing up as issues with stringing, surface finish, or durability. Now over the past couple of years I've had issues with filament jamming and I've had issues with print quality and with prints that I could pull apart at the layer lines. I think many people have at one time or another, but most of those jams I just chalked up to heat creep, where the heat from the heater block was sneaking across the heat break and into the cold side of the hot end. Now some of those jams were definitely a result of badly out of spec filament. When 1.75 millimeter filament has blobs over 2 millimeters thick in some places, well those blobs just don't fit in the hot end. And while I think the occasional stringing issues or prints that I could pull apart along layer lines were the result of not printing at the proper temperature for the material or were just plain bad filament, I can't rule out the possibility that some of those issues were the result of filament having absorbed too much moisture because I didn't always store it properly. But these days, I almost always store my filament in the bag that it came in along with that big desiccant pack, but some of the filament doesn't come in a zipper bag. Like my protopasta filament, it doesn't come in zipper bags, but the spools do fit in gallon Ziploc bags. But other spools don't fit in the gallon bags, so when I finish off a spool of filament that does have a zipper bag, I always save that bag. They're always big enough to hold whatever one kilogram spool I need them to. But putting a spool of filament in a bag with a desiccant pack doesn't remove much moisture from the filament. In fact, some say it doesn't remove any moisture at all. But it does help prevent the filament from absorbing any more moisture than it already has. The desiccant pack absorbs it from the air in the bag before the filament can. So if keeping filament bagged with a desiccant pack can, at most, keep the moisture level from increasing, how do you actually remove moisture from your filament? Well, in order to dry filament, it needs to be heated up, but it needs to stay below its glass transition temperature. The glass transition temperature is the temperature at which the filament stops being a solid and starts getting soft and squishy. At the glass transition temperature, the filament is easy to deform, so keeping the filament below that temperature is very important. This temperature varies depending on the filament, but for PETG, it's around 85 degrees C, and for PLA, it can be anywhere from 45 degrees C to 60 degrees C. Now, this information is usually on the filament manufacturer's website. Okay, so now we know that we need to heat the filament up to dry it, and it has to stay below a certain temperature. Well, what's a good way to do that? Well, the three most common methods for drying filament are using an oven, using a food dehydrator, and using a purpose-made filament drying box. So let's talk about oven baking first. Now even though there are probably thousands of 3D printer users who do this on a regular basis and swear by it, using an oven is probably the method that I would fear the most. Oven thermostats can be inaccurate. Now this usually isn't a problem when preparing food. As recipes often say, ovens may vary, adjust cooking time accordingly. You can usually tell if your food's been in the oven too long or if the oven's too hot just by looking at it. With filament, you can't tell if the oven is too hot until your filament melts, and that'll ruin both your filament and your day. And on top of that, you'll have a big mess to clean up. Plus, even if you do have an accurate oven, you need to bake your filament for about six hours. 
Next up is the food dehydrator method. Now, this is one that I've personally used, although not quite the same way that others have. The usual method is to take a consumer-grade countertop food dehydrator, such as this one from Amazon, snip the centers out of the drying trays, and then stack a spool or two of filament inside. Then you set the thermostat for an appropriate temperature, turn the unit on, and come back six hours later to turn it off. So I took that idea and said, supersize me. I got a huge plastic tub and cut a hole in one side of the lid to allow hot air from the dehydrator to enter the tub, and I cut some vent holes on the other side of the lid. I used the temperature and humidity sensor project from an Alien 3D UFO mystery box, and I mounted the sensor inside the tub near the output vent. This flow-through ventilation design ensures that the air is always moving across the filament, and at the output side, I'm measuring the exit temperature and humidity so I've got a pretty good idea of the environment inside the tub. Although this is kind of extreme overkill, I know that if I need to, I can throw several spools of filament in there and just let them dry out for a week or more because I have the space and the time. After a few days, I zipper bag the filament with desiccant packs for storage. But the main drawback to my particular method is that, well, it's supersized. I literally have to put this monstrosity in the dining room and my wife doesn't like the constant noise of the dehydrator. And I get it, it's not the quietest thing in the world, but it's an awesome bulk drying solution. Now, that said, using the regular countertop dehydrator with the modified trays and drying one or two spools at a time isn't a bad way to go. And if you have the space and a way to let the spools rotate while they're on their sides, you can drill a hole in the dehydrator to feed your filament through and you can print while keeping the filament dry. So that brings us to the third drying method, the purpose-made filament dryer like the Sunlu Filadryer S1, which Sunlu was kind enough to send to me. Now, devices such as this are specifically made for the purpose of drying filament. So obviously I've gotten this out of the box already, but let me show you the unboxing experience. Inside the box, the unit is wrapped in foam to keep it safe. And after getting it out of the foam, you can see the power adapter packed safely in a foam tray inside. The unit can be used to dry filament for storage, but it can also be used to dry filament and keep it dry during a print job. It has a forward-facing filament output point here, as well as an upper point here, which is closed off with a small rubber plug. Remove that plug and you can feed the filament out through here. Inside, the lower half of the unit is lined with insulating foil, and the bottom contains the heater and the electronics. Also inside, there are two rollers allowing your spool to rotate while your printer feeds on the filament. The lid isn't difficult to open. It opens easily, but it also closes snugly, and it stays closed. I haven't had a problem with the filament pulling against the lid and popping it open. The operating instructions are pretty simple to follow, and there's a chart inside showing the recommended temperatures and run times for various materials. Now, I took a moment to read over the instructions, and here's what I found. It's preset to run for six hours at 50 degrees C, which should be compatible with pretty much any material. But if you're not sure, check your filament manufacturer's website to confirm that you're staying below the glass transition temperature of whatever material you're trying to dry. When the display is off, the unit is in standby mode. Pressing either button wakes the unit up, and it starts its 50 degree C six hour drying cycle. The LCD shows the current temperature inside the unit, and a short press on the left button shows the current target temperature. From here, you can use the left and right buttons to adjust the target temperature anywhere between 35 and 55 degrees C. Once you get the temperature where you want it, stop pressing the buttons. After about three seconds, the unit accepts that value as the target temperature and uses that for the rest of the cycle. To see how much time is left in the current drying cycle, long press the left button. This shows you how many hours are left to go. If you just started a cycle, this will display 06H. If you're halfway through, it'll display 03H. Long press the left button again to exit the time remaining display. To set the duration of the drying cycle, long press the left button just as you did to see the time remaining. Then, use the left or right buttons to adjust how many hours you want a drying cycle to last. You can set it to run for up to 24 hours. Long press the left button to accept that value. Be aware that the metal inside the unit does get hot to the touch. 
that's where the heat comes from after all, so be careful if you have your hands or fingers inside the unit. Trust me, it does get hot, and it did make me say ow. Interestingly, there is no off or stop button. So if you want to stop the drying cycle, you can set the cycle duration to zero hours, which causes the unit to enter standby mode. Or you could unplug its power cord and plug it in again. Now this method is arguably faster. As we say in the IT field, have you tried turning it off and on again? Now something else that I noticed is that the display backlight is really, really dim. I don't know if they're all like this or if it's just this particular unit. Okay, so the Phila Dryer S1 is pretty easy to use and it crams in a lot of functionality even with only two buttons. But is there a quantifiable way to determine whether the Phila Dryer S1 can actually remove moisture from filament? Well, Stefan at CNC Kitchen released a video recently in which he compared different filament drying methods. And in that video, he weighed the filament before and after drying it. And by comparing the weight before and after, he was able to determine how much moisture the filament had lost. So that's the route that I wanted to take. But then I discovered that my trusty kitchen scale has a minimum resolution of one gram. Now, a gram of water is equal to a milliliter of water, which is the same as a cubic centimeter of water. Now, for visual reference, I printed a cubic centimeter. And there it is right there. So the Phila Dryer S1 would have to be able to remove a volume of at least this much water in order for a change to even register on my scale. Now to me, that seems like an awful lot of water to be hiding in a spool of filament. And most of my filament I already dry with that big honkin' supersize me dry box that I built. But then I remembered that I had a spool of yellow TPU loaded on my Sovol SV01, and because I'm short on space in here, I've had it up in the attic workshop in the summer in Texas. And it's been a little humid, and TPU is hygroscopic. So that spool of yellow TPU became my test subject. I set the scale to display in grams, and I weighed the spool, 1,034 grams. Then I put it in the Phila Dryer S1, and I started the preset 6 hour, 50 degree C drying cycle. Six hours later, when the unit automatically turned off, I took the filament out and weighed it again, 1,032 grams, a difference of not one, but two grams of water. Probably a little more because the scale only measures in one gram increments. I honestly didn't think there was going to be a measurable difference, but there it was. Now in terms of percent change in the weight of the filament, this spool is lighter by only 0.19%, so that doesn't sound like a lot. But still, two grams of water, two milliliters, two cubic centimeters of water? Who knew there could be that much water in a spool of filament? Okay, I'm impressed. The Sunloo Phila Dryer S1 does what they say it does, removing moisture from a spool of filament. And it allows you to print with the filament while keeping it dry. So if you've got a particularly thirsty type of filament, it'll get dry and stay dry while you're using it. It's dead quiet and it looks nice too. In fact, I'm thinking of putting my big dry box away for a while since all my filament is dry and bagged. The Phila Dryer S1 is a heck of a lot smaller and I've proven to myself that it works. And really the only negative I can think of is the dim backlighting on the LCD it makes it kind of hard to read. As for improvements that I might like to see on a future model, maybe a Phila Dryer S2 perhaps, it might be RGB LEDs for the backlighting so you could pick a backlight color to suit your mood. And maybe a cancel button to stop a cycle short if you need to. So that's the Sunloo Phila Dryer S1. It does what it says it does, and does it quietly while looking good. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time that we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, remember, it's a humid world out there. Keep yourself dry, keep your filament dry, and print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end of the video, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. If you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. Now don't forget, whether you're interested in buying the things that are featured in this video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. Now I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at as well. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free and is a great way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.